Gene Therapy, Wikipedia Audio In medicine, gene therapy is the therapeutic delivery of nucleic acid into a patient's cells as a drug to treat disease. The first attempt at modifying human DNA was performed in 1980 by Martin Klein, but the first successful nuclear gene transfer in humans, approved by the National Institutes of Health, was performed in May 1989. The first therapeutic use of gene transfer as well as the first direct insertion of human DNA into the nuclear genome was performed by French Anderson in a trial starting in September 1990. Between 1989 and February 2016, over 2,300 clinical trials had been conducted, more than half of them in Phase I. Not all medical procedures that introduce alterations to a patient's genetic makeup can be considered gene therapy. Bone marrow transplantation and organ transplants in general have been found to introduce foreign DNA into patients. Gene therapy is defined by the precision of the procedure and the intention of direct therapeutic effects. Background Gene therapy was conceptualized in 1972, by authors who urged caution before commencing human gene therapy studies. The first attempt, an unsuccessful one, at gene therapy was performed by Martin Klein on July 10, 1980. Klein claimed that one of the genes in his patients was active six months later though he never published this data or had it verified and even if he is correct, it's unlikely it produced any significant beneficial effects treating beta thalassemia. Short-lived nature before gene therapy can become a permanent cure for a condition, the therapeutic DNA introduced into target cells must remain functional and the cells containing the therapeutic DNA must be stable. Problems with integrating therapeutic DNA into the genome and the rapidly dividing nature of many cells prevent it from achieving long-term benefits. Patients require multiple treatments, immune response any time a foreign object is introduced into human tissues, the immune system is stimulated to attack the invader. Stimulating the immune system in a way that reduces gene therapy effectiveness is possible. The immune system's enhanced response to viruses that it has seen before reduces the effectiveness to repeated treatments, problems with viral vectors Viral vectors carry the risks of toxicity, inflammatory responses, and gene control and targeting issues, multi-gene disorders Some commonly occurring disorders, such as heart disease, high blood pressure, Alzheimer's disease, arthritis, and diabetes are affected by variations in multiple genes, which complicate gene therapy, some therapies may breach the Weismann barrier protecting the testes, potentially modifying the germ line, falling afoul of regulations in countries that prohibit the latter practice, insertional mutagenesis if the DNA is integrated in a sensitive spot in the genome, for example in a tumor suppressor gene, the therapy could induce a tumor. This has occurred in clinical trials for X-linked severe combined immunodeficiency patients, in which hematopoietic stem cells were transduced with a corrective transgene using a retrovirus, and this led to the development of T-cell leukemia in 3 of 20 patients. One possible solution is to add a functional tumor suppressor gene to the DNA to be integrated. This may be problematic since the longer the DNA is, the harder it is to integrate into cell genomes. CRISPR technology allows researchers to make much more precise genome changes at exact locations, costa lipogeny tiparvivec or glibera, for example, at a cost of $1.6 million per patient was reported in 2013 to be the world's most expensive drug.
After extensive research on animals throughout the 1980s and a 1989 bacterial gene tagging trial on humans, the first gene therapy widely accepted as a success was demonstrated in a trial that started on September 14, 1990, when Ashi de Silva was treated for ADA, SCID. The first somatic treatment that produced a permanent genetic change was performed in 1993. This procedure was referred to sensationally and somewhat inaccurately in the media as a three-parent baby, though mtDNA is not the primary human genome and has little effect on an organism's individual characteristics beyond powering their cells. Gene therapy is a way to fix a genetic problem at its source. The polymers are either translated into proteins, interfere with target gene expression, or possibly correct genetic mutations. The most common form uses DNA that encodes a functional, therapeutic gene to replace a mutated gene. The polymer molecule is packaged within a vector which carries the molecule inside cells. Early clinical failures led to dismissals of gene therapy. Clinical successes since 2006 regained researchers' attention, although as of 2014, it was still largely an experimental technique. These include treatment of retinal diseases labors congenital amaurosis and choroideremia, X-linked SCID, Ada SCID, adrenoleukodystrophy, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, acute lymphocytic leukemia, multiple myeloma, hemophilia, and Parkinson's disease. Between 2013 and April 2014, U.S. companies invested over $600 million in the field. The first commercial gene therapy, Gendison, was approved in China in 2003 for the treatment of certain cancers. In 2011 Neovasculgen was registered in Russia as the first in-class gene therapy drug for treatment of peripheral artery disease, including critical limb ischemia. In 2012 Glibera, a treatment for a rare inherited disorder, became the first treatment to be approved for clinical use in either Europe or the United States after its endorsement by the European Commission. Approaches Following early advances in genetic engineering of bacteria, cells, and small animals, scientists started considering how to apply it to medicine. Two main approaches were considered replacing or disrupting defective genes. Scientists focused on diseases caused by single gene defects, such as cystic fibrosis, hemophilia, muscular dystrophy, thalassemia, and sickle cell anemia. Glibera treats one such disease, caused by a defect in lipoprotein lipase. DNA must be administered, reach the damaged cells, enter the cell and either express or disrupt a protein. Multiple delivery techniques have been explored. The initial approach incorporated DNA into an engineered virus to deliver the DNA into a chromosome. Naked DNA approaches have also been explored, especially in the context of vaccine development. Generally, efforts focused on administering a gene that causes a needed protein to be expressed. More recently, Increased understanding of nuclease function has led to more direct DNA editing, using techniques such as zinc finger nucleases and CRISPR. The vector incorporates genes into chromosomes. The expressed nucleases then knock out and replace genes in the chromosome. As of 2014 these approaches involve removing cells from patients, editing a chromosome and returning the transformed cells to patients. Gene editing is a potential approach to alter the human genome to treat genetic diseases, viral diseases, and cancer. As of 2016 these approaches were still years from being medicine. 
gene therapy may be classified into two types. In somatic cell gene therapy, the therapeutic genes are transferred into any cell other than a gamete, germ cell, gametocyte, or undifferentiated stem cell. Any such modifications affect the individual patient only, and are not inherited by offspring. Somatic gene therapy represents mainstream basic and clinical research, in which therapeutic DNA is used to treat disease. Over 600 clinical trials utilizing SCGT are underway in the U.S. Most focus on severe genetic disorders, including immunodeficiencies, hemophilia, thalassemia, and cystic fibrosis. Such single gene disorders are good candidates for somatic cell therapy. The complete correction of a genetic disorder or the replacement of multiple genes is not yet possible. Only a few of the trials are in the advanced stages. Cell Types Somatic In germline gene therapy, Germ cells are modified by the introduction of functional genes into their genomes. Modifying a germ cell causes all the organism's cells to contain the modified gene. The change is therefore heritable and passed on to later generations. Australia, Canada, Germany, Israel, Switzerland, and the Netherlands prohibit GGT for application in human beings for technical and ethical reasons, including insufficient knowledge about possible risks to future generations and higher risks versus SCGT. The U.S. has no federal controls specifically addressing human genetic modification. Germline Vectors Viruses Nonviral Hurdles the delivery of DNA into cells can be accomplished by multiple methods. The two major classes are recombinant viruses and naked DNA or DNA complexes. In order to replicate, viruses introduce their genetic material into the host cell, tricking the host's cellular machinery into using it as blueprints for viral proteins. Retroviruses go a stage further by having their genetic material copied into the genome of the host cell. Scientists exploit this by substituting a virus's genetic material with therapeutic DNA. A number of viruses have been used for human gene therapy, including retroviruses, adenoviruses, herpes simplex, vaccinia, and adeno-associated virus. Like the genetic material in viruses, therapeutic DNA can be designed to simply serve as a temporary blueprint that is degraded naturally or to enter the host's genome, becoming a permanent part of the host's DNA in infected cells. Nonviral methods present certain advantages over viral methods, such as large-scale production and low host immunogenicity. However, Nonviral methods initially produced lower levels of transfection and gene expression, and thus lower therapeutic efficacy. Later technology remedied this deficiency. Deaths Methods for nonviral gene therapy include the injection of naked DNA, electroporation, the gene gun, synoperation, magnetofection, the use of oligonucleotides, lipoplexis, dendrimers, and inorganic nanoparticles. Some of the unsolved problems include Three patients' deaths have been reported in gene therapy trials, putting the field under close scrutiny. The first was that of Jesse Gelsinger in 1999. Jesse Gelsinger died because of immune rejection response. One XSCID patient died of leukemia in 2003. In 2007, a rheumatoid arthritis patient died from an infection, the subsequent investigation concluded that the death was not related to gene therapy. 
In 1972 Friedman and Roblin authored a paper in Science titled Gene Therapy for Human Genetic Disease. Rogers was cited for proposing that exogenous good DNA be used to replace the defective DNA in those who suffer from genetic defects. In 1984 a retrovirus vector system was designed that could efficiently insert foreign genes into mammalian chromosomes. The first approved gene therapy clinical research in the U.S. took place on September 14, 1990, at the National Institutes of Health, under the direction of William French Anderson. Four-year-old Ashanta de Silva received treatment for a genetic defect that left her with ADA, SCID, a severe immune system deficiency. The effects were temporary, but successful. Cancer gene therapy was introduced in 1992-93. The treatment of glioblastoma multiforme, the malignant brain tumor whose outcome is always fatal, was done using a vector expressing antisense IGFI RNA and by the FDA in 1994. This therapy also represents the beginning of cancer immunogene therapy, a treatment which proves to be effective due to the anti-tumor mechanism of IGFI antisense, which is related to strong immune and apoptotic phenomena. History in 1992 Claudio Bordignon, working at the Vita Salute San Raffaele University, performed the first gene therapy procedure using hematopoietic stem cells as vectors to deliver genes intended to correct hereditary diseases. In 2002 this work led to the publication of the first successful gene therapy treatment for adenosine deaminase deficiency. The success of a multi-center trial for treating children with SCID from 2000 and 2002, was questioned when two of the ten children treated at the trial's Paris Center developed a leukemia-like condition. Clinical trials were halted temporarily in 2002, but resumed after regulatory review of the protocol in the US, the United Kingdom, France, Italy, and Germany. In 1993 Andrew Gobi was born with SCID following prenatal genetic screening. Blood was removed from his mother's placenta and umbilical cord immediately after birth, to acquire stem cells. The allele that codes for adenosine deaminase was obtained and inserted into a retrovirus. Retroviruses and stem cells were mixed after which the viruses inserted the gene into the stem cell chromosomes. Stem cells containing the working ADA gene were injected into Andrew's blood. Injections of the ADA enzyme were also given weekly. For four years T cells, produced by stem cells, made ADA enzymes using the ADA gene. After four years more treatment was needed. 1970s and earlier Jesse Gelsinger's death in 1999 impeded gene therapy research in the U.S. As a result, the FDA suspended several clinical trials pending the re-evaluation of ethical and procedural practices. The modified cancer gene therapy strategy of antisense IGFI RNA using antisense slash triple helix anti-IGFI approach was registered in 2002 by Wiley Gene Therapy Clinical Trial, N635 and 636. The approach has shown promising results in the treatment of six different malignant tumors, glioblastoma, cancers of liver, colon, prostate, uterus, and ovary. This antigene antisense slash triple helix therapy has proven to be efficient, due to the mechanism stopping simultaneously IGFI expression on translation and transcription levels, strengthening anti-tumor immune and apoptotic phenomena. 1980s 1990s Twenty hundreds. Sickle cell disease can be treated in mice. 
The mice which have essentially the same defect that causes human cases used a viral vector to induce production of fetal hemoglobin, which normally ceases to be produced shortly after birth. In humans, the use of hydroxyurea to stimulate the production of HBF temporarily alleviates sickle cell symptoms. The researchers demonstrated this treatment to be a more permanent means to increase therapeutic HBF production. A new gene therapy approach repaired errors in messenger RNA derived from defective genes. This technique has the potential to treat thalassemia, cystic fibrosis, and some cancers. Researchers created liposomes 25 nanometers across that can carry therapeutic DNA through pores in the nuclear membrane. In 2003 a research team inserted genes into the brain for the first time. They used liposomes coated in a polymer called polyethylene glycol, which, unlike viral vectors, are small enough to cross the blood-brain barrier. Short pieces of double-stranded RNA are used by cells to degrade RNA of a particular sequence. If a CERNA is designed to match the RNA copied from a faulty gene, then the abnormal protein product of that gene will not be produced. Gendison is a cancer gene therapy that delivers the tumor suppressor gene P53 using an engineered adenovirus. In 2003, it was approved in China for the treatment of head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. In March researchers announced the successful use of gene therapy to treat two adult patients for X-linked chronic granulomatous disease, a disease which affects myeloid cells and damages the immune system. The study is the first to show that gene therapy can treat the myeloid system. In May a team reported a way to prevent the immune system from rejecting a newly delivered gene. Similar to organ transplantation, gene therapy has been plagued by this problem. The immune system normally recognizes the new gene as foreign and rejects the cells carrying it. The research utilized a newly uncovered network of genes regulated by molecules known as MICR ORNAs. This natural function selectively obscured their therapeutic gene in immune system cells and protected it from discovery. Mice infected with the gene containing an immune cell MICR ORNA target sequence did not reject the gene. In August scientists successfully treated metastatic melanoma in two patients using killer T cells genetically retarget to attack the cancer cells. In November researchers reported on the use of VRX-496, a gene-based immunotherapy for the treatment of HIV that uses a lentiviral vector to deliver an antisense gene against the HIV envelope. In a phase I clinical trial, five subjects with chronic HIV infection who had failed to respond to at least two antiretroviral regimens were treated. A single intravenous infusion of autologous CD4 T cells genetically modified with VRX-496 was well tolerated. All patients had stable or decreased viral load, four of the five patients had stable or increased CD4 T cell counts. All five patients had stable or increased immune response to HIV antigens and other pathogens. This was the first evaluation of a lentiviral vector administered in a U.S. human clinical trial. In May researchers announced the first gene therapy trial for inherited retinal disease. The first operation was carried out on a 23-year-old British male, Robert Johnson, in early 2007. Labor's congenital amaurosis is an inherited blinding disease caused by mutations in the RPE65 gene. The results of a small clinical trial in children were published in April. Delivery of recombinant adeno-associated virus carrying RPE65 yielded positive results. 
In May two more groups reported positive results in independent clinical trials using gene therapy to treat the condition. In all three clinical trials, patients recovered functional vision without apparent side effects. In September researchers were able to give trichromatic vision to squirrel monkeys. In November 2009, Researchers halted a fatal genetic disorder called adrenoleukodystrophy in two children using a lentivirus vector to deliver a functioning version of ABCD1, the gene that is mutated in the disorder. An April paper reported that gene therapy addressed achromatopsia in dogs by targeting cone photoreceptors. Cone function and day vision were restored for at least 33 months in two young specimens. The therapy was less efficient for older dogs. In September it was announced that an 18-year-old male patient in France with beta-thalassemia major had been successfully treated. Beta-thalassemia major is an inherited blood disease in which beta-hemoglobin is missing and patients are dependent on regular lifelong blood transfusions. The technique used a lentiviral vector to transduce the human SS globin gene into purified blood and marrow cells obtained from the patient in June 2007. The patient's hemoglobin levels were stable at 9 to 10 g dl. About a third of the hemoglobin contained the form introduced by the viral vector and blood transfusions were not needed. Further clinical trials were planned. Bone marrow transplants are the only cure for thalassemia, but 75% of patients do not find a matching donor. Cancer immunogene therapy using modified antigene, antisense slash triple helix approach was introduced in South America in 2010-11 in La Sabana University, Bogota. Considering the ethical aspect of gene diagnostic and gene therapy targeting IGFI, the IGFI expressing tumors i.e. lung and epidermis cancers, were treated. In 2007 and 2008, a man was cured of HIV by repeated hematopoietic stem cell transplantation with double delta 32 mutation which disables the CCR5 receptor. This cure was accepted by the medical community in 2011. It required complete ablation of existing bone marrow, which is very debilitating. In August two of three subjects of a pilot study were confirmed to have been cured from chronic lymphocytic leukemia. The therapy used genetically modified T cells to attack cells that expressed the CD19 protein to fight the disease. In 2013, the researchers announced that 26 of 59 patients had achieved complete remission and the original patient had remained tumor-free. Human HGF plasmid DNA therapy of cardiomyocytes is being examined as a potential treatment for coronary artery disease as well as treatment for the damage that occurs to the heart after myocardial infarction. In 2011 Neovascolgen was registered in Russia as the first in-class gene therapy drug for treatment of peripheral artery disease, including critical limb ischemia, it delivers the gene encoding for VEGF. Neovasculogen is a plasmid encoding the CMV promoter and the 165 amino acid form of VEGF. The FDA approved Phase 1 clinical trials on thalassemia major patients in the U.S. for 10 participants in July. The study was expected to continue until 2015. In July 2012, the European Medicines Agency recommended approval of a gene therapy treatment for the first time in either Europe or the United States. The treatment used a lipogeny tiparvivec to compensate for lipoprotein lipase deficiency, which can cause severe pancreatitis. The recommendation was endorsed by the European Commission in November 2012 and commercial rollout began in late 2014.
Ulipogeny Tiparvavec was expected to cost around $1.6 million per treatment in 2012, revised to $1 million in 2015, making it the most expensive medicine in the world at the time. As of 2016, only one person had been treated with drug. In December 2012, it was reported that 10 of 13 patients with multiple myeloma were in remission or very close to it three months after being injected with a treatment involving genetically engineered T-cells to target proteins New York SO1 and LAGE1, which exist only on cancerous myeloma cells. In March researchers reported that three of five adult subjects who had acute lymphocytic leukemia had been in remission for five months to two years after being treated with genetically modified T-cells which attacked cells with CD19 genes on their surface, i.e. all B-cells, cancerous, or not. The researchers believed that the patient's immune systems would make normal T-cells and B-cells after a couple of months. They were also given bone marrow. One patient relapsed and died and one died of a blood clot unrelated to the disease. Following encouraging Phase 1 trials, in April, researchers announced they were starting Phase 2 clinical trials on 250 patients at several hospitals to combat heart disease. The therapy was designed to increase the levels of CIRXA2 a protein in heart muscles, improving muscle function. The FDA granted this a breakthrough therapy designation to accelerate the trial and approval process. In 2016 it was reported that no improvement was found from the CUPID-2 trial. In July researchers reported promising results for six children with two severe hereditary diseases had been treated with a partially deactivated lentivirus to replace a faulty gene and after 732 months. Three of the children had metachromatic leukodystrophy, which causes children to lose cognitive and motor skills. The other children had Wiskott-Aldrich syndrome which leaves them to open to infection, autoimmune diseases, and cancer. Follow-up trials with gene therapy on another six children with Wiskott-Aldrich syndrome were also reported as promising. In October researchers reported that two children born with adenosine deaminase severe combined immunodeficiency disease had been treated with genetically engineered stem cells 18 months previously and that their immune systems were showing signs of full recovery. Another three children were making progress. In 2014 a further 18 children with ADA-SCID were cured by gene therapy. Ada SCID children have no functioning immune system and are sometimes known as bubble children. Also in October researchers reported that they had treated six hemophilia sufferers in early 2011 using an adeno-associated virus. Over two years later all six were producing clotting factor. In January researchers reported that six choroideremia patients had been treated with adeno-associated virus with a copy of REP1. Over a six-month to two-year period all had improved their sight. By 2016, 32 patients had been treated with positive results and researchers were hopeful the treatment would be long-lasting. Choroideremia is an inherited genetic eye disease with no approved treatment, leading to loss of sight. In March researchers reported that 12 HIV patients had been treated since 2009 in a trial with a genetically engineered virus with a rare mutation known to protect against HIV with promising results. Clinical trials of gene therapy for sickle cell disease were started in 2014. There is a need for high-quality randomized controlled trials assessing the risks and benefits involved with gene therapy for people with sickle cell disease. In February Lentiglobin BB305, 
a gene therapy treatment undergoing clinical trials for treatment of beta thalassemia gained FDA breakthrough status after several patients were able to forego the frequent blood transfusions usually required to treat the disease. In March researchers delivered a recombinant gene encoding a broadly neutralizing antibody into monkeys infected with simian HIV, the monkeys' cells produced the antibody, which cleared them of HIV. The technique is named immunoprophylaxis by gene transfer. Animal tests for antibodies to Ebola, malaria, influenza, and hepatitis were underway. In March, Scientists, including an inventor of CRISPR, Jennifer Doudna, urged a worldwide moratorium on germline gene therapy, writing scientists should avoid even attempting, in lax jurisdictions, germline genome modification for clinical application in humans until the full implications are discussed among scientific and governmental organizations. In October, Researchers announced that they had treated a baby girl, Layla Richards, with an experimental treatment using donor T-cells genetically engineered using talon to attack cancer cells. One year after the treatment she was still free of her cancer. Children with highly aggressive all normally have a very poor prognosis and Layla's disease had been regarded as terminal before the treatment. In December. Scientists of major world academies called for a moratorium on inheritable human genome edits, including those related to CRISPR-K9 technologies but that basic research including embryo gene editing should continue. In April the Committee for Medicinal Products for Human Use of the European Medicines Agency endorsed a gene therapy treatment called Strymvlis and the European Commission approved it in June. This treats children born with adenosine deaminase deficiency and who have no functioning immune system. This was the second gene therapy treatment to be approved in Europe. In October, Chinese scientists reported they had started a trial to genetically modify T cells from 10 adult patients with lung cancer and re inject the modified T cells back into their bodies to attack the cancer cells. The T-cells had the PD-1 protein removed using CRISPR-K9. 2002 A 2016 Cochrane systematic review looking at data from four trials on topical cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator gene therapy does not support its clinical use as a mist inhaled into the lungs to treat cystic fibrosis patients with lung infections. One of the four trials did find weak evidence that liposome-based CFTR gene transfer therapy may lead to a small respiratory improvement for people with CF. This weak evidence is not enough to make a clinical recommendation for routine CFTR gene therapy. In February Kite Pharma announced results from a clinical trial of CART cells in around 100 people with advanced non-Hodgkin lymphoma. In March, French scientists reported on clinical research of gene therapy to treat sickle cell disease. In August, the FDA approved tisaginal clehu cell for acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Tisaginal clehu cell is an adoptive cell transfer therapy for B-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia. T-cells from a person with cancer are removed genetically engineered to make a specific T-cell receptor that reacts to the cancer, and are administered back to the person. The T-cells are engineered to target a protein called CD19 that is common on B-cells. This is the first form of gene therapy to be approved in the United States. In October, a similar therapy called axicaptagene silylocele was approved for non-Hodgkin lymphoma. In December the results of using an adeno-associated virus with blood clotting factor 8 to treat 9 hemophilia A patients were published. Six of the seven patients on the high-dose regime increased the level of the blood clotting 8 to normal levels. 
The low and medium dose regimes had no effect on the patient's blood clotting levels. 2003 In December, the FDA approved Luxterna, the first in vivo gene therapy, for the treatment of blindness due to labor's congenital amaurosis. The price of this treatment was $850,000 for both eyes. CRISPR gene editing technology has also been used on mice to treat deafness due to the DFNA36 mutation, which also affects humans. Speculated uses for gene therapy include 2006 Gene therapy techniques have the potential to provide alternative treatments for those with infertility. Recently, successful experimentation on mice has proven that fertility can be restored by using the gene therapy method, CRISPR. Spermatogenical stem cells from another organism were transplanted into the testes of an infertile male mouse. The stem cells re-established spermatogenesis and fertility. Athletes might adopt gene therapy technologies to improve their performance. Gene doping is not known to occur, but multiple gene therapies may have such effects. Kaiser ETAL argue that gene doping could level the playing field if all athletes receive equal access. Critics claim that any therapeutic intervention for non-therapeutic slash enhancement purposes compromises the ethical foundations of medicine and sports. 2007 2008 Genetic engineering could be used to cure diseases but also to change physical appearance, metabolism, and even improve physical capabilities and mental faculties such as memory and intelligence. Ethical claims about germline engineering include beliefs that every fetus has a right to remain genetically unmodified, that parents hold the right to genetically modify their offspring, and that every child has the right to be born free of preventable diseases. For parents, genetic engineering could be seen as another child enhancement technique to add to diet, exercise, education, training, cosmetics, and plastic surgery. Another theorist claims that moral concerns limit but do not prohibit germline engineering. Possible regulatory schemes include a complete ban, provision to everyone, or professional self-regulation. The American Medical Association's Council on Ethical and Judicial Affairs stated that genetic interventions to enhance traits should be considered permissible only in severely restricted situations, clear and meaningful benefits to the fetus or child, no trade-off with other characteristics or traits, and equal access to the genetic technology irrespective of income or other socio-economic characteristics. As early in the history of biotechnology as 1990, there have been scientists opposed to attempts to modify the human germline using these new tools, and such concerns have continued as technology progressed. With the advent of new techniques like CRISPR, in March 2015 a group of scientists urged a worldwide moratorium on clinical use of gene editing technologies to edit the human genome in a way that can be inherited. In April 2015, researchers sparked controversy when they reported results of basic research to edit the DNA of non-viable human embryos using CRISPR. A committee of the American National Academy of Sciences and National Academy of Medicine gave qualified support to human genome editing in 2017 once answers have been found to safety and efficiency problems but only for serious conditions under stringent oversight. 2009 2010s 2010 2011 2012 2013 2014 
2015 2016 2017 Speculative uses Fertility Gene doping Human genetic engineering Regulations United States Regulations covering genetic modification are part of general guidelines about human-involved biomedical research. There are no international treaties which are legally binding in this area, but there are recommendations for national laws from various bodies. The Helsinki Declaration was amended by the World Medical Association's General Assembly in 2008. This document provides principles physicians and researchers must consider when involving humans as research subjects. The statement on gene therapy research initiated by the Human Genome Organization in 2001 provides a legal baseline for all countries. Hugo's document emphasizes human freedom and adherence to human rights, and offers recommendations for somatic gene therapy including the importance of recognizing public concerns about such research. No federal legislation lays out protocols or restrictions about human genetic engineering. This subject is governed by overlapping regulations from local and federal agencies, including the Department of Health and Human Services, the FDA, and NIH's Recombinant DNA Advisory Committee. Researchers seeking federal funds for an investigational new drug application, must obey international and federal guidelines for the protection of human subjects. NIH serves as the main gene therapy regulator for federally funded research. Privately funded research is advised to follow these regulations. NIH provides funding for research that develops or enhances genetic engineering techniques and to evaluate the ethics and quality in current research. The NIH maintains a mandatory registry of human genetic engineering research protocols that includes all federally funded projects. An NIH advisory committee published a set of guidelines on gene manipulation. The guidelines discuss lab safety as well as human test subjects and various experimental types that involve genetic changes. Several sections specifically pertain to human genetic engineering, including Section 3C1. This section describes required review processes and other aspects when seeking approval to begin clinical research involving genetic transfer into a human patient. The protocol for a gene therapy clinical trial must be approved by the NIH's Recombinant DNA Advisory Committee prior to any clinical trial beginning, this is different from any other kind of clinical trial. As with other kinds of drugs, the FDA regulates the quality and safety of gene therapy products and supervises how these products are used clinically. Therapeutic alteration of the human genome falls under the same regulatory requirements as any other medical treatment. Research involving human subjects, such as clinical trials, must be reviewed and approved by the FDA and an institutional review board. Gene therapy is the basis for the plotline of the film I Am Legend and the TV show Will Gene Therapy Change the Human Race? It is also used in Stargate as a means of allowing humans to use ancient technology. Popular Culture